Welcome to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. Let's break down all of the Easter eggs, references, and clues in the teaser for Stranger Things Season 4. The teaser mostly takes place in the Rainbow Room. This is the space in the Hawkins lab where Dr. Brenner allowed his child test subjects to play. But also, the comic book Stranger Things 6 fills in a lot of the backstory of the room and some of the other test subjects. I'll go over all of those other test subjects, their numbers, and their powers later in the video. Let's break down these clues. The trailer opens with a clock reading 3 o'clock. I don't think this is just a random time. I think that something significant happens at this exact moment. In case you missed it, yesterday there was a teaser trailer for the teaser trailer. It showed seven screens flashing images of the Rainbow Room. In almost every image, objects in the room were splattered in blood. So I think that 3 p.m. was a significant time on this particular day. This is the day when the kids instituted a plan to break out, killing several guards. Or maybe one kid had a really bad day, lashed out, freeing or killing the other test subjects. I have theories about this that I'll go over later in the video. 3 o'clock is usually the time when school lets out, metaphorically, when the kids are set free. This could be the double meaning here. The kids are all released at 3 o'clock. We see the reflection of four children in the security camera. Now, if all of these shots are happening roughly at the same time, that means there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven kids in the room. Notice that all of them are wearing gowns and have shaved heads, just like Eleven. Now, we've seen glimpses of this space before in the flashbacks in Season 2. And, by the way, the toy that we see in the teaser teaser trailer here is the one that Callie was playing with in that flashback. So, we might even be looking at the day when Callie escaped. So, when my gifts were strong enough, I used them to escape. And I ran. I ran away as far as I could and also did not wear one of these gowns. And in the comic book 6, neither did the other test subjects. This makes me think that these are the kids that number past 11, maybe even going all the way up to 23. At first, I thought that these kids telekinetically racing cars were climbing up the wall like Spider-Man or the train spotting baby. Dad! Dad! But no, there's a chair right here, so no creepy wall climbing kids. Also, notice that one of these toys looks exactly like Hopper's truck from season one. Then this kid drops a puck in to a board that reminded me of Plinko on The Price is Right. Here comes tip number one. 10,000 in the middle. 10,000 in the middle. Oh my god! 10,000 Oh my god! Now, if you notice, there are no straight-up toys in the room. Everything is a puzzle or designed to help the children exercise their powers. So, what's the purpose of the Plinko board? I think this child could be able to influence probability. The puck lands in number seven, which could be the number of the test subject who dropped it, who is able to influence the probability of it landing there. Notice that eight is already filled. Eight was Callie's number and she could still be in the lab. Numbers three and six are missing and, as we'll see later, this also ties in with the comic. Then we cut to two kids playing chess. Now this could be used to test their intelligence and analytical abilities. All of the experience in the MKUltra program were designed to increase the abilities of the subjects' minds. So it makes sense that increased intelligence was one of these abilities. Chess could also be a way to gauge the ability to see the future. The Stranger Things comics follow a subject named Six who has precognitive abilities. She's the first person inside the deprivation tank where she sees images of the Demogorgon years before it actually appears. Notice that the chess pieces are all shaped like birds. At first glance, it appears as if black is winning because they have more pieces. But notice that the white side still has their queen, the peacock. In chess, the queen is the most powerful piece on the board, and the good guys in the show still have their queen, 11. The black and white squares on a chess board could also be a metaphor for the upside down and the real world. In season one, 11 expressed the upside down using a D&D board. Here, it's expressed as being intertwined with our world, like one can't exist without the other. Chess pieces also move between the black and white squares, just as 11 and maybe these other subjects are able to send their minds in and out of the upside down. And if the hands of this subject look familiar, it's because that's your mom. There's another shot of the Plinko board, now with the reflection of the fluorescent lights, like a chessboard, now symbolizing the descent into the upside down. This is all leading toward a big fan theory that I think is going to turn out to be true. This child is building a tower of red blocks. This could be symbolic of an ability to instinctively build machinery, like Forge in the X-Men comics, or maybe discover the flaws in any design, like Karnak in the Inhumans. This could also be symbolic of the series' villains, the Soviet Union, symbolized by the color red. After all, this tower is made of red squares, and the Russian capital is located in Red Square. Or it could just be some kids, you know, 
playing with blocks. We also see the subjects using very similar blocks in the comics. These kids are constructing a large puzzle, again, testing their mental acuity. But look at the shelf behind them at these huge dice. It's interesting that they add up to 12, perhaps meaning 12 kids, but more than likely, these are another way to test the kids to see if the children have the ability to influence probabilities or see the future. Stranger Things takes a lot of influence from the X-Men. The issue name dropped in season one. I'll take your was later called back to here when Eleven imitated the Dark Phoenix. So what's this have to do with dice and probability? Well, in the comics, Wanda Maximoff's original power was to influence probabilities. Now over the years, this grew until she had the ability to alter reality itself. So don't be surprised if the kid who can change dice rolls can eventually create a sitcom pocket universe. Now this ability would also explain the Magic 8 Ball. It's a pretty boring toy and not much of a way to test the subject's mental abilities, unless they're able to influence which answer appears in the ball. In this case, it says Says, all signs point to yes. I'm wondering if maybe the kid who started the slaughter, some lonely kid like this one, is looking at the eight ball and somehow this answer is telling them, yes, kill them, kill them all. Burn the house down. Burn them all. Otherwise, it's hard to see the significance here. These are actually the dice that we saw splatter with blood in the teaser. So don't get too attached to these kids playing right next to them. It's don't die! So I mentioned the other powered kids that we've seen in the comics. Six, like I mentioned, can see the future. Three is able to influence people's minds, like a Jedi mind trick. I must be allowed to speak. There were also twins called Nine and Nine and a Half who were pyrokinetic like Drew Barrymore in Firestarter. Three and Six were both teenagers, but what's interesting is that Three actually recruited Six to join the lab voluntarily, but the series ends with Six sacrificing her life so Three and Nine can escape. This showed Dr. Brenner that he was better off keeping his subjects as slaves, shaving their heads and dressing them in identical gowns to remove all individuality, and we see that reflected here. Then we cut to the other side of the door, which is cold and barren. This is again mirroring the upside down an exact replica of the real world, but dark and scary. Brenner enters and the kids all call him Papa, just like Eleven did. Showing that his new strategy was to become a parent to all of these children, so they felt indebted to him for safety and shelter. But then the camera whip pans past rooms seven, nine, and 10, three subjects we haven't seen yet. I'm wondering if this was after eight escaped, so her room was given a new number. And then we land on Eleven. Eleven, are you listening? <sighs> Now this line has a double meaning. Yes, it's Brenner making sure that Eleven is paying attention to him, but also it's said over Black just before Eleven wakes up. This parallels the moment in season two when Eleven is able to find Callie. Hello? Remember, at the end of season three, Eleven has lost her powers. I think that in this season, the other test subjects are going to be calling out to her through her dreams, and this will help restore her abilities. I feel whole. Now I piece of me was missing and now it's not that is if any kids are left alive after the bloodbath it's teased in the trailer so let's talk about this moment because it seems like the seminal event at the hawkins lab after this brenner seems to only be focused on 11 and she doesn't remember any other test subjects there's a couple possibilities what if the lab was attacked by soviet operatives it is strange that the Soviets were able to build such a strong foothold in Hawkins and that they knew so much about the Upside Down, so it's likely that they had spies in the Hawkins lab. Maybe one of these spies kidnapped a test subject, and that kid is still in the Soviet Union helping the Russians. This could even be the American referred to in the post credit scene. No, no, no. The Americans. This kid in Russia might have even opened up their own portal to the Upside Down, and that's why they're building train tracks to reach it in the original season four trailer. Or more likely, one of these kids just snaps, kills a guard, injures Brenner, and leads a jailbreak into the Upside Down. There's been a fan theory for years that the Mind Flayer is actually one of Brenner's test subjects. After all, it displays telepathic and telekinetic abilities much like Eleven. Maybe this event that occurs at three o'clock sees one of the kids losing control of their abilities. They open some kind of mind rift and kill the others. Now this doesn't just send the kid into the upside down, it creates the upside down. I mean think about the upside down for a second. It's weird that there's a whole universe with the exact same buildings as ours, but there was no one there to build them, unless it was created specifically by one of the children at the lab. So afterwards, this kid exists as a being of pure consciousness, the Mind Flayer, and some of the other kids might fall into this rift as well. They also mutate and become the first Demogorgons. But that's just my thoughts. Let me know your theories down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.